here with Mary Ann Rockburn here at uh, Shallow Baptist Church in Chipley, here for Missions Fair. Having a great time tonight, and we'll be right back. Welcome to the people, events, and business of The Real Florida. Real Florida Magazine highlights the pristine, unspoiled Florida. From special events to businesses to just getting away from it all, Real Florida Magazine offers a taste of The Real Florida, the way it's supposed to be. Now available free of charge almost everywhere. So take a deep breath, relax, and get back to what's important. Check us out at realfloridamagazine.org. We'll be waiting for you. Welcome back here at Shallow Baptist Church in Chipley, Florida. Right now, uh, for lack of a better term, for Missions Night, uh, this is an opportunity for the church to welcome uh, all of their congregation to come meet with several of the uh, local missions, some from out of town. Here now with Tim Brigham, uh, affectionately called Tim Two, uh, second only to Pastor Tim Patton. Tim, um, tell us a little bit about what we're going to see here tonight and what this overall effort is all about. All right. Pastor is giving us a vision to um, be missional um, in our everyday life. And so we've got uh, individual mission trips that mission opportunities that every member in the church, senior adults to children, can be involved with throughout the year. And so we've got one table with all those options that we've got um, set up. We've got another table for quarterly mission trips where we're going to do as a group, one time a quarter, our whole church, we're going to go do a construction project or a social um, ministry project, just something that we're doing as a church, ministering uh, one, individually, ongoing, every quarter, and then we also have a booth with our North American mission trips we're doing. Uh, we're planning one to New Orleans in March and one to Atlanta uh, next November. You know, when the average person thinks mission, mm -hmm. they think uh, a week in Nicaragua <laughs> or uh, a trip to South America somewhere else or to Europe or Asia or Africa, speaking to people who um, have not um, been exposed to Jesus Christ, let alone accepted him. Right. Um, in this case, we're talking something that's really easy for someone to do, sometimes as easy as in the same town in which you live. And that's what's so exciting about what you're doing here is you're opening up people to that mission concept and how they can implement that right here at home, sometimes without really going anywhere other than what they normally do on a regular day. Absolutely. We believe the Great Commission is as you go throughout your life, Take every opportunity to make disciples. As you're at the grocery store, as you're at home, just giving a, a card, praying for someone, telling them you love them, that is what the Great Commission is. This morning's sermon, uh, it just really hit home uh, for um, the, all the time that Tim has been here at the church now as pastor, um, well over a year now. Um, he's been talking about circles being stronger than rows. In other words, get out of those pews and become engaged, be a part of the church. Here recently, he's become much more adamant about it. He's challenging the, the congregation. And as I was talking to Debbie, my wife, here on the way here tonight, um, how inspirational. And it gets you out of your comfort zone. How often we come to church for that one hour a week, and then if we come back Sunday or Wednesday night. But we we thinking linearly, linearly uh, again, in those rows. Right. Talk a little bit about what that concept of circles versus rows is all about. Well, we, we do believe that circles are better than rows and you can connect with one another in circles because you get to know people in a smaller group versus in a large group. All you pretty much get to do is, hi, how are you? You don't get to interact, see people who are hurting. You can't share your life with them. And so in a small group setting, you can learn about someone, where they're from, what, what makes them tick. Um, and so we can only do that in a small group. And so that's why we believe circles are better than rows. And so we are, we're encouraging everybody to get involved in a small group where we can mentor and disciple and grow together, where we can do ministry hand to hand, heart to heart, shoulder to shoulder. Tim Patton, pastor of Shallow Baptist Church, what are you actually calling tonight? What is the label of tonight's activities? Uh, tonight is Missions Fair. It's the opportunity to go around and to see all of the different opportunities there are to be on mission here at home and around in our region. And so it's kind of like a fair where you go to different booths and see the different activities, but this is a missions fair. So you get to find out about the different missions activities that are here. In talking to Tim Brigham, uh, we pointed out that sometimes when you think mission, you think going to uh, Nicaragua or you're going to Africa or you're going to, to minister someplace where a uh, third world country, not realizing sometimes, not accepting the fact that we have the need and poignantly uh, right here at home for just that such activity. Um, and this is helping us to point out that, that, that obviousness. Very much so. Uh, the Bible talks about the fact that missions is kind of a concentric circle idea. You start at home and you work out to the uttermost parts of the earth. 
and uh, Shiloh has a great history of always going around the world. We have done missions in all kinds of countries. But one of the areas that we were not hitting was right here at home. So one of the things that we decided to do was to find ministries that were doing great work right here and partner with them. So not exactly reinventing the wheel. We want to connect with some folks that are doing a great job that we can come alongside with and partner. And through that, we may discover a couple of ministries or missions that we want to take on entirely on our own. But we want to start right here in our backyard because Chipley in Washington County is part of who we are. And we want to start with our friends and our neighbors to let them know about the love of Christ. As you well know, this is a very giving community. Um, if there's a need, it's filled. Uh, mm -hmm. Somehow, some, somewhere, people that don't have are still giving to make those things happen. Um, who are some of the groups that are here tonight um, giving out some of their collateral, demonstrating some of what they do? Um, several groups that are here. One is um, the Good News Club. That is actually a ministry that we sponsor. It's a Bible study club that's in the local schools. It's a great opportunity for kids to come and learn about the love of God. Uh, the Crossover, which is a basketball ministry that takes place at Old Rolak High School. And uh, they just have uh, students that come in from the community. They play basketball. They do a devotion. They have a meal. Uh, and then also we have several ministries of the West Florida Baptist Association. The Pregnancy Center that's working with young girls who find themselves, many of them uh, are uh, either thinking about an abortion or they find themselves in an unwed uh, pregnancy and, and they're asking for some assistance and so they, they do that. Uh, parenting classes, things of that nature. Also Love in Action, which is a ministry here in town that uh, provides goods and services for people who have need. They also provide some um, financial assistance as well. They have a thrift store that they sell items to help promote that and so we're, we're coming alongside them uh, in that. Uh, as well. Um, also, you're going to make me think about all these right this second. And I'm going to tell you. <laughs> no, and, and we realize before we're done, we're going to pan them all. So we're going to actually show okay. the viewer what we're, we've got here. And I didn't expect you to, to remember them all because there are more than I thought there would be. Um, Alcus Brock, uh, Brother Alcus just recently passed. Yes. Um, you never fill those shoes. Uh, no. It'll be impossible. But we do have a void. Uh, we do have uh, an opportunity there for one or multiple people to to sort of step up. Uh, it, that's going to be a tough uh, position to to, um, to 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 fill. It is. Alcus has been the only director of missions that the West Florida Baptist Association has ever had. He's the only uh, man that is kind of overseeing and leading and coordinating missions and ministries for the Baptist churches in this area. Uh, he is the dad, okay? He's the shepherd, and it is going to be extremely tough. Um, the, the benefit is that the churches can stand up and do the work. The work will go on, which really is the key. It's not about a person. It's about the, the work of the gospel that's going out, and, and Alcus would absolutely want the ministries to go on. Um, but the association does have some work to do, and um, they're going to have to really look at and think about how we're going to move forward and who's going to step into that place. And uh, we'll certainly be praying for that person because they have enormous shoes to fill. Here now with who we affectionately call Tim Three, Tim Shoemaker, uh, heads up our children's ministry here at Shiloh. Tim, this is an exciting evening. Um, we've talked to uh, Tim Brigham and Tim Patton, both Tim Two and Tim One, respectively. Uh, and this kind of tries, uh, finishes out that trifecta of, of the Tims. The Brothers Tim. Yeah. Okay. But this, um, this is exciting. This is something that's a little bit outside the comfort zone of some sure. of the uh, congregation. Um, but man, what better way to, oppor uh, what better opportunity to let people know that uh, participating in mission doesn't necessarily mean going to Africa or South America yes. when we have need right here. Talk a little bit about what we're doing here tonight. Well, what we're doing is providing opportunities to have uh, information given out and uh, allow people to sign up for different things that they're interested in, uh, sharing the love of Jesus in, in all sorts of ways. And uh, everything, the one that I'm uh, at right now is for our Good News Clubs, which is in children's ministry and uh, what we do on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, in our elementary school, sharing uh, the gospel, the good news to uh, children from first through fourth grade. And uh, then we have the pregnancy center and uh, other, uh, the crossover ministries, other things that we're involved in and just letting people know what we're doing. And then they can uh, decide, well, this is something that I'd like to get involved in and, and they can sign up. And there it is. Well, and it's all about, and, and Brother Tim's message has been, getting people out of the pews and getting them to interact, right. engaging them, getting them to interact with the community. And w my goodness, it, everybody seems to be excited. They're very excited. And I think that uh, Brother Tim's uh, passion and excitement has been contagious. As I pointed out to him a minute ago, we haven't even started yet, and it looks like we got a pretty full house. That's true. That's strong. That is absolutely strong. Everybody is very excited about what's going on here at Shiloh and what we're doing. 
uh, for missions and, and uh, for presenting Jesus to the world, and that's what it's all about. Here now with Marianne Rockburn. Marianne, we've, uh, we've spoken to your husband at length over the years, uh, Barry, and I yes. uh, haven't had the pleasure of meeting you, so thanks for being here Thank tonight. You. Thank you. You are here representing um, several of the organizations yes. within that uh, Baptist umbrella. Talk about what you're here talking about uh, to these folks here tonight. All right. I am the director of our West Florida Pregnancy and Family Center. It's on uh, Brickyard Road here in Chipley. I also am co-resident manager of the Armstrong House uh, Emergency Shelter with my husband, Barry. And I have been given information also on Love in Action, a uh, help with benevolence, uh, clothing, furniture, and all. But my heart is a pregnancy center. Well, by default, you sort of inherited Love in Action tonight in the absence <laughs> of Barry or anybody else. We lost a great man uh, just recently, Alcus Brock. Um, he has been uh, uh, basically the missions director for, uh, the only missions director, I guess, from the inception here. Um, that's, a t that's a big blow to the community. Yes, it is. We, uh, our community has lost a great man in Brother Alcus. He was a great mentor to myself and to my husband, Barry. Uh, he was on the committee uh, in hiring me and I just have such a love for that man. He was, he was a godly, godly man. Well, we've had the fortune of, like I say, um, having conversation and being able to interact with Barry over the years. Um, the Pregnancy Center offering uh, probably one of the only uh, opportunities for uh, uh, unwed mothers or, or someone who finds themselves in a situation where they, they have to make a choice to get information uh, from you. Um, that is a, um, that's a, that's a passionate calling. That is a, that's a, that's a tough situation for everybody involved. Um, we appreciate your, your part in that. Um, how is that program going overall? The program is going wonderful. Uh, we opened in April of 2002, and we have helped uh, close to a thousand clients at the pregnancy center. Uh, this physical year, which starts in October, we've held 144 classes at the center. Uh, we have about from 25 to 30 clients that comes in each week. They come in, they take their classes, earn their baby bucks, and then shop in our baby boutique. It's a wonderful program, wonderful program. In 16 weeks, you've done 120 classes. 144 classes. My goodness. <laughs> Well, on one hand, it's a shame that there is the need to that extent. Yes. On the other hand, what a wonderful blessing that you are available, um, that you offer the service that you do. What are your results? Um, what are you finding um, uh, as far as um, those who have to make that choice? What, what Do you have a, a, a ballpark idea of what your results are? Well, right off the top of our head, we know of seven young ladies that chose life for their children that came into the center. We received several calls uh, seeking abortion. Our desire is to have the young lady come in. That way we can share with her exactly what abortion is, how it affects her physically, spiritually, and mentally. Uh, our oldest one that uh, the mother has chose life, our little girl is nine years old now. So we praise God for that and for the mother that chose life on that. That was early on in the program, obviously, that she came in. Yes, yes, it was. It was right in the beginning there that she came in seeking the abortion. Uh, poster child, indeed. Uh, that's, that's uh, man, that, that's that got to be heartwarming. Is, if, if, if that was the only result that you got, it would have been worth it. Absolutely, absolutely. But we know of seven. So God has truly blessed at the Pregnancy Center. Here now with Forrest Smith. Uh, Forrest is the director of Crossover, uh, one of the outreach ministries here locally. Forrest, you've got a very um, unique program and one that certainly works to engage uh, the audience to whom you're trying to appeal. Talk about what it is that you're doing. Well, when my wife and I moved back to Chipley a year ago, we wanted to get involved. Um, I used to coach basketball. She likes cooking for large groups. We wanted to blend those two passions together. We met with a couple of the local pastors and they said, well, the local kids around the old Rolex school are breaking in to play basketball there. So we said, well, this is kind of a God sign of just opening some doors for us. So we began to just come in, open the gym once a week on a consistent basis. They play, we have dinner and we share devotion. And through that, we've just been able to develop relationships and just share the gospel with them. 
What a tailor-made opportunity to um, accomplish several things on several different levels, not the least of which is sharing Jesus Christ. Exactly. Um, you're dealing with a group of guys and uh, some women Girls, too? Yes, yes. Who, who have the energy and the desire not to be sitting in front of a Nintendo game and a TV <laughs> set, but to be out there playing, and here we are locking up the place so that they can't do it. Now, that, that right. in itself is another issue, but right. um, wow, what an opportunity and what a ministry uh, that you've adopted. Now, what do you do for a living? I'm in pharma uh, pharmaceutical sales, and my wife is a local optometrist here in Chippewa. So she knows a lot of the people in the community, and this has provided an opportunity for me to meet people in the community. Yeah, absolutely. Now, does that translate to the families? Are you finding that there's uh, participation uh, or at least you get the opportunity to speak to family members of the kids with whom you're working? Some. Uh, we have not been able to meet most of the families. Uh, the kids just kind of have the freedom to walk and through the neighborhood and so forth and come to the gym and leave. Uh, but yeah, through our developing relationships, taking them home afterwards, meeting them at the ball games and out in the community, we have been able to, to, to meet them and develop, start to develop some relationship with them. Well, with a program only a year old, you've got a long way to go, obviously. Lots of opportunity to grow. Exactly. Um, and who knows where it'll lead. Um, exactly. You've got a potential for a legacy here uh, <laughs> over a period of years. And, I, and our hats are off to you. That's, that's, I knew a little bit about what you did, but in this conversation, learning a little bit more. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, afford you the opportunity to come and uh, talk on our TV show uh, sometime. Our studios are on Railroad Avenue in downtown uh, Chipley. But, uh, and to maybe do a longer format to investigate. Here tonight talking about Mission Fair and all of these opportunities, but um, yours is probably one of the few here that is directed towards a demographic that it will find themselves in trouble uh, were it not for your program. So not only are you offering a, a service and an opportunity, but you're actually truly helping them, and <laughs> again, on many different levels. Have you been around long enough? Have you been doing this long enough to see results of any kind? Definitely we have. We've been able to help uh, a few kids uh, finish out their probation, um, get out of the alternative school, get back into regular public school. And that was just something that God laid in our lap. Um, most of our uh, building relationships has come from outside of the gym. So we've been able to get to know some of the kids and then we see them, invite them to church, see them out in the community. Um, and so, you know, we have five to 10 that may go to church with us on any given Sunday and come back to the house for dinner. Um, we just are trying to follow wherever God's leading us. And we hope that they see God and not us. Uh, so we don't want any credit because it's just us trying to obey wherever God's leading us. This is one of the few opportunities where you don't necessarily have to furnish the enthusiasm or the energy. Right. It sounds like it's there. All you have to do is sort of harness it and direct it a little bit. Yes. Are you finding that um, there are some who, once they find out what your ultimate goal is, um, or, or don't come back? Or, or, I mean, is it worth it to them to take the chance on on whatever it is they perceive the opportunities there are to, to, to partici participate in the program. Yes, yeah, no, we haven't had any issues like that. Um, we've had to actually downsize or cut some of the other uh, kids because we really wanted to focus on a specific age group. When we first opened, we had any age group of kids coming in and we were pushing close to 100 kids. It was too many for that size and so we uh, have narrowed the demographic into just 13 to 18 year olds. Uh, and so we're actually looking for someone to do something similar with a younger age group so that we're hitting all of the kids in that area there. So, But no, we haven't had any, any issues like that. The kids come as much as they can. We try to be there on a consistent basis so they know when they can come, we will be there, and they can participate. They can come and go as they want to during the evening. They do not have to stay for dinner in the devotion, but most of them do. Well, thank you for all that you do. That This is pretty amazing. A whole lot more than I had anticipated. Um, and again, hopefully we'll be talking soon. Great. Thank you. Here at Shiloh Baptist Church for Mission Fair, here now with Forrest Smith, talking about Crossover, uh, the outreach basketball program, which is engaging young kids with lots of energy and giving them an outlet and exposing them to Jesus Christ. We'll be right back.